Good day. My name is Galan Jeremy S. And we are the group 3. So, we are here to discuss the Taba's inverted model. So first, who is Hilda Taba? So, Hilda Taba was an architect, a curriculum theorist, a curriculum developer, and a teacher education educator. She was a student of John Dewey. She wrote a book entitled Curriculum Development, Theory and Practice that was published in 1962. So next is the Tabas Inverted Model. So Tabas model follows an inductive approach. In this regard, curriculum workers starts with the specific and build up to a general designs as opposed to the more traditional deductive approach of starting with the general design working down to the specifics. The model is also well known for its teacher approach. The task of the teachers in terms of lesson preparation is actually reflected on the model. So, Taba believe that the renovation of curricula and programs is not a short effort but a long process. Clearly shows the curriculum and instruction are not separate independent components. You cannot have one without the other. So, Hilda Taba created a multi-purpose teaching model that utilized the use of multiple processes, listing, grouping, labeling, regrouping, and synthesizing. Taba is a belief that teachers are aware of the students' needs, hence, they should be the one to develop the curriculum. So this is also why it is called grassroots approach because the needs of the students are at the forefront to the curriculum. So when was the Taba model developed? So the Taba model developed in 1962, the curriculum design model. Uh, Taba model was first proposed by Hilda Taba in 1971 for use by instructors at the classroom level. And it's described in her 1962 novel, Curriculum Development, Theory and Practice. So what is the contribution of Hilda Taba in curriculum development? So Hilda Taba contributed to the theoretical and pedagogical foundations of concept development and critical thinking in social studies curriculum and help to lay the foundations of education for diverse student populations. Thank you, Mom Jeremy. So once again, I'm Aaron Xavier M. Pasaryo from BP Ed 2A. So now I will continue the discussion in the model of curriculum by Hilda Taba. So let's proceed to the step of the Taba model. So the first one is the diagnosis of needs. The curriculum development and teachers' instructional planning both begin by identifying the needs of the learners for whom the curriculum and instructional are intended. This step is critical in order to truly identify and sustain what is lacking in terms of the student educational needs and the societal expectation of them. So the diagnosis of needs, these are the variety of learners in the school environments, all with their different backgrounds, skills, and spatially needs. So the first step to formulate a curriculum or an instructional plan is to identify what do the student needs and what do the student need to learn. So by the identifying who the instructor are intended for and why is it needed, we will able to have a concrete goal in mind and the foundation of the curriculum instructional will be settled. So next, let's proceed to the formulation of the objectives. So after the teacher and curriculum developer have identified the needs of the learners through a standardized process of diagnosis the needs of the learners and have determined which areas required special attention. And the next step is to formulate and specify the learners' objectives. So for the formulation of goals, after identifying the needs of the learners, learning goals should be determined in order to know what is the expected outcome at the end of the lesson or the curriculum. This will also make the instruction more 
specific and the result will be more visible in the end making it possible to know if the instruction or the curriculum was successful or not. So now, let's proceed to the third step which is the selection of content. The content included should be carefully determined and chosen based on its relevance, validity, and significance. Furthermore, the content chosen should be aligned with the formulated objective as a result of a standardized process of diagnosing students' needs. So in the selection of content, when the goals is settled, it is now time to select what content is relevant or necessary in order to support the goals and the needs. Within the selection, it is important to keep in mind that the content must be relevant, timely, factual, and necessary in order to ensure the student will have an effective learning experience. So next, let's proceed to the organization of content. It is also critical to sequence content effectively after it has been chosen. The content chosen must also be proper organized in accordance with some type of sequence and in accordance with set objectives as well as the student maturity. So in the organization of content, it is important to know the flow of the lesson in order for the learners to effectively comprehend them. The student cognitive maturity should be kept in mind in determining the sequence of the lessons. Universally, a light of topic is given at the first before verging into something deeper. So this will help eradicate academic stress in the student because they are exposed to the lesson in an organized manner. So that's all for my topic. So for the continuation of our discussion, Ma'am Chris Jane discussed the other step of TABA model. Thank you, Sir Aaron. Hi, I'm Chris Jane. I will continue the discussion about steps of the TABA model. Selection of learning experiences. At this point, the teacher chooses instructional methods that will engage students with the content. Remember that the selection of learning experiences must also directed toward the achievement of predetermined goals. In short, the selection of learning experiences is concerned with making decisions about the experiences in theory and practical which need to, to be given to the students undergoing any educational programming. This section will help you understand the concept, basis, principles, and criteria of selection of learning experiences or the facilitate interaction of learner with content through appropriate instructional methodology. Next is organization of learning experiences. Learning activities like content must be sequenced and organized. It is critical to use a strategy when sequencing learning activities to ensure that students acquire the necessary skills and competencies. The content determines the proper sequence of learning activities. More importantly, it is determined by the competencies that students must acquire which are reflected in the more for formulated objectives at the outset. The teacher needs to keep in mind the student he or she will be teaching. The learning activities be organized in a sequence depending both on a content sequence and learning characteristic. Or in short, sequence and organized learning activities. The last one is evaluation and means of evaluation. The teacher and curriculum developer must determine which objective has been met. To evaluate learning outcomes, evaluation pr procedures must be designed. The proper alignment of these steps must be strictly adhered to. So, to assess the achievement of learning objectives, evaluation, procedures needed to be to be devised, determine how objectives are to be accomplished and what have been accomplished. That's all. Thank you. Good day everyone. I'm Monica S. Anchieta. 
and I will be discussing the application of Hilda Taba models. These models currently used as basis in most curriculum design. First, it gives primary consideration in identifying the needs of a student. Second, used as guide in developing objectives. Third, consider in selecting instructional materials. Fourth, use as basis in organizing learning experiences. And last, evaluation. So these applications aim to encourage higher order thinking skills in the classroom. Fifth, sees the curriculum as plan for learning. And last, gives importance to objectives in order to establish a sense of purpose in deciding what to include, exclude, and emphasize in the curriculum. So that's all. So good day everyone, I am Kenneth Aspira Salonga from BPED 2A. So for the continuation of our topic, I am going to discuss the application of TABAS model in the classroom. So the following are the strengths and weaknesses of TABAS model when being applied to classroom preparation and teaching. So first, we're going to talk about the strengths of using the TABAS model in the classroom context. Gifted students begin thinking of a concept, then dive deeper into that concept. So what is gifted students? They are the students who are gifted, have above average intelligence, and are superior talent for something, such as music, art, or math. Most public school programs for the gifted selected children who have superior intellectual skills and academic aptitude. So first, focuses on open-ended questions rather than right or wrong questions. The open-endedness requires more abstract thinking, a benefit to our gifted students. The third is the questions and answers lend themselves to rich classroom discussion. And last, easy to assess student learning. An open-ended question is a question that cannot be answered with yes or no response or with a static response. Open-ended questions are phrased as a statement which requires a longer response. The response can be compared to information that is already known to the questionnaire. So, however, there are also limitations in the use of the TABAS model in the classroom setting. It can be difficult for non-gifted students to grasp. First, it is difficult for heterogeneous classroom. For this class, we define heterogeneous classroom as a classroom in which the students have a wide range of previous academic achievement and varying levels of oral and written proficiency in the language of instruction. For such classrooms, group work is highly recommended and well-documented instructionally strategy. So first, it works well for fiction and non-fiction, may be difficult to easily use in all subjects. So that is all for our topic. I hope you learned a lot. So thank you for watching.